What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mets Talk here again with Nico, of course. And today we're going to be recapping the series against the Philadelphia Phillies that wrapped up not too long ago, the four-game set. Recap the frustrating Subway series as well as things kind of went downhill for the Mets. And we're going to talk about a couple other things, preview the Rocky series. And yeah, we'll get to everything. Also going to have a few talking points in terms of questions that both Nico and I will answer before we uh, jump into any of that though be sure to leave a like if you're watching on YouTube and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know when we upload the podcast and if you're listening on Spotify Google Podcasts, or Apple be sure to leave us a rating review all of that also we are brought to you by Manscaped now with the new graphics here as you can see it's kind of difficult to get that off a little there, bit. but uh, you guys could sort of see it but they are the best Trust me, because a girl doesn't want it when you're down, when you're dirty like that down there. So listen, you need the right tools, all right? And Manscaped has got you. You could go to manscaped.com, use the code Python for 20% off and free shipping. I'm helping you out. I'm saving you money. Not You're not just helping me out. You're helping yourself out because I'm putting you on game here. Manscaped is the best. Over 6 million men worldwide are using Manscaped. 12 million balls, that is, being helped out. Why not? Let them help yours out. Use code Python for 20% off and free shipping there, as well as check out TickPick. If you're looking to go to a game, you're going to buy tickets, and then at the end you see that it is $20 when you saw $5 for the tickets that you're going to buy. Well, that's because there's fees. With TickPick, that doesn't exist. The $5 that you see, you're paying. Go check them out. They're the best. After the long introduction, Nico, how are you feeling? Because it, it after this series, it, it's rough. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were feeling real good in the first half of this when we took three out of four against the Phillies and then, of course, had to lose both of the Yankees with Scherzer, Walker on the mound. Wanted DeGrom to be on the mound, of course, in game number two. Did not happen, but look, Walker pitched a good game. We're going to get into it more, but overall, it's just not a good feeling right now. We're only up two in the division, so it's time to really bounce back and get at the Rockies, hopefully sweep them. Yeah, they, they really are going to need to at least take three out of four. Three out of four at least. My, uh, reaction video, but we'll talk about that later on. First, let's recap the Mets-Philly series. So, game one, setting the stage here. Max Scherzer versus Ranger Suarez. And this was kind of a weird game for Scherzer. He allowed nine hits in this one, but only allowed one earned run. Had six strikeouts. I this was, wasn't this the second game of the series sorry to cut you off wait um no this was the first game this or no i'm looking at i'm looking at the last series against the phillies what the what am i doing right now oh, <laughs> um no the seven the two game yeah thank no, you for catching fun. that the seven the two game i i don't know why i was backtracking to that one i was gonna say that was uh weird on me i was like shorts are happy yeah. to against the phillies um that confused <laughs> me for a second but Apologize, everyone. Uh, no, Bassett was on the bump versus Aaron Nola, and the Mets actually got to Aaron Nola, which was nice to see because the offense was awful in that last game in the Atlanta series. They were awful with the exception of that third game in the Atlanta series, so it was nice to see the offense going a bit. And Bassett, he was dealing. He ended up giving six innings, and there were times where things got things got worrying, just like his last start against the Phillies, but Four strikeouts, six innings, I'll take it. Yeah, Bassett uh, pitched a very good game, gave us good, a good six innings. And then, you know, a couple of runs were let up in the seventh inning. Uh, who was on the bump in the seventh? It was uh... – My guess is uh, – my guess is Joe Alley. But... It probably was Joe Alley. But, yeah, they got to Aaron Nola early, which was really good to see. The bats were going that game, and it was a great win for the Mets to start off the series hot. So good stuff all around. Yeah, it was nice to see the bats actually get going. And I, I preach this a lot in my reaction videos that you really need the top five to contribute in your lineup. And in this game, you saw it. Nimmo went one for four. Marte went two for five. Lindor went three for five. Alonzo went two for five. And Vogie went one for two. And uh, even Darren Ruff got on base in the... Well, actually, no, he didn't. He uh, pitch ran. That's where the run came in. I got thrown off there. But uh, still, the top five contributed. 
for the Mets that entire game, which was huge, and getting the Aaron Nola, that is also huge. He still did pretty solid, all things considered. I mean, nine strikeouts, five earned runs. It's just that the Mets obviously get lucky. We know mm-hmm. that by now, those yep. lucky hits. But uh, it was also nice to see them get going, considering – Alonzo has been in a bit of a slot, or at the time he kind of was, uh, and he was due for a home run, and he ended up hitting a home run in this game, so it was nice to see uh, his home run drought not last longer than his longest stretch there, which I believe was 15, 16 games, so nice to see Alonzo get a home run, also got a run from that fielder's choice there, um, and then Jeff McNeil, RBI single as well. And then Brett Beatty as well getting an RBI single, which was nice to see. The offense was rolling in this game. And the bullpen, too. The bullpen, which held it down. A lot. Yeah. So, what were you going to say about the bullpen? Yeah, no, nah, I was just uh, happy with the bullpen performance this game. They didn't, uh, you know, give us any scare. Gave up a couple runs, Joely, as you said, but then they came in, it shut it down. I, I was just guessing. It wasn't? It was, Ottavino was allowing a couple hits, it looks like. Okay. Ottavino is usually always consistent, so he gets the pass. But, yeah, that was that was a good win to see, as you said. Uh, top guys in the lineup performing, getting uh, runs in, which is what the Mets really need. And it was just a brilliant way to start the series out. Yeah, and something that was uh, nice to see, when the Mets score within the first – inning or two i'm feeling good about the chances of them winning the game and you saw that they ended up scoring in the first inning from that pete alonzo and then they end up scoring in the third too when they score early they put themselves in such a good spot to win and especially when you get to guys like nola early or zach wheeler who we're about to talk about in a minute here but when you get to those guys early that is a good sign you frustrate them you get them get them pissed off which wheeler will talk about him uh because he was really he was really he had some, Yeah, he had some things to say for sure. We'll get to we'll that. We'll segue to that game. I mean, there's not much to talk about with that game. Granted, there's not much with this, too, because this was another game where it was another- a really just – they got in, got out, clean game. Granted, it was a doubleheader, but uh, very, very solid game here as well. Very solid. Got on the board early – or not early, actually. Top of the fifth, things started to get going when Michael Perez got a single, drove in two runs, which – we love to see production from our catches because we don't see it often. Um, yeah, so that was good to see. Then, uh, you know, kept it rolling. Got to Zach Wheeler, which was very impressive. Got him out of the game. And uh, on the bump for the Mets, this game was... Uh, Trevor Williams versus Yeah, Trevor Zach Williams. Wheeler. He had a very solid outing as well. So I was happy to see that. We did not expect a win going to that game, I'm sure. But, you know, getting it done again, going up 2-0 in the series was big. Yeah, I think it was Gary that was calling Trevor Williams a Swiss Army knife on the broadcast, or it might have been Ron Darling, but whoever that it was, they nailed it right on the yeah. nailed it right on the head there because Trevor Williams, no matter what role he's been thrown in, he's been thriving. And Buck also made the right decision, took him out at the right time, in my opinion. You didn't you didn't have him go through the order another time there, and it was appropriate when he took him out. Uh, yeah. Only allowing four hits, three strikeouts, two walks, and no earned runs. And it is especially good considering what the Mets did to Zach Wheeler because Zach Wheeler, five and a third of work, he allowed four earned runs, four walks, six strikeouts for him, five hits. And again, another scenario where the Mets were getting going. They didn't get going early, but uh, come the fifth inning, they were really getting the Zach Wheeler. And you also had that fan that ran onto the field, I think, that inning. So it actually kind of helped the Mets because it threw Zach Wheeler off a bit more too. True, true. Uh, I didn't even get to. Did they even uh, telecast telecast that with uh, the fan running on? No, right. No, they never show the fans running on the field because they don't like to yeah. give them attention. Yeah, they don't give the attention. I mean, I can't, yeah. like because I tweeted uh, when it happened. That's embarrassing because I just find it personally embarrassing when any sort of game has to be delayed or just stopped because of a fan being stupid whether it's throwing something on the field ice court whatever sport it is i just find it dumb when that happens so and then i had a a phillies fan get into my dms well it's embarrassing that you're a met fan it was a met what a comeback (laughs) if it was a met fan that did that i would be 
probably more pissed and more embarrassed than a Philly fan running onto the field. Because with this, you know what? I'll take it. Because again, the Mets actually got going a bit. The Michael Perez uh, two run RBI that you mentioned, and yeah, uh, six inning two. They also got going offensively. That's when they really kind of broke out a bit. Lindor had that RBI triple after Marte walked. And then Jeff McNeil also, who was uh, – what were his stats for this series? Because Jeff McNeil went crazy. He went nuclear this series. Very uh, happy with Jeff McNeil because when he's playing well, I think he uh, – it really feeds off in the lineup and uh, gets everyone going a little bit. Yeah, in his last seven right now, he's got 11 hits, four RBIs, one walk. Struck out twice. He's saying 379 yeah. with a 400 on base and a 517 slugging. Not not too bad. Not too bad at all. Not at um, all. But yeah, that you saw them getting to Zach Wheeler, and you saw them most importantly getting to that abysmal bullpen that they have. I would have loved for them to score off Brad Hand because no, oh, we know we don't like Brad Hand. I hate Brad Hand, uh, but. You know what, Nick Nelson, they, they bullied him. They bullied him and oh, yeah. to the point where a position player came out of the field. And it was funny that Edwin Diaz was warming up in the exact same inning. And then Derek Hall ends up coming into the game, having the closeout. The Philly fans that were only there for the first game of the doubleheader, they're heading to the parking lot at that point. And, yeah, Mets, thankfully, hold on. Sam Clay looked good in his uh, Mets debut. Could have had a clean inning if the defense wasn't so – abysmal you had Beatty Buddha ball I think in this one I think that was the one where Beatty did yet I know uh Yomer Sanchez though yeah Beatty had that throwing error and then Yomer Sanchez was the one that booted the ball uh this game could have been an eight to one game big deal but I mean still mm-hmm. Sam Clay clean inning from him which we like we like that they didn't have to bring Diaz in because I'm not gonna lie when they were up eight to two going into or eight to one going into the bottom of the ninth I really felt a weird feeling that Sam Clay was just going to implode and they were going to have to bring Diaz in. I, it's just, <laughs> it's just what happens. Yeah. You can't expect anything less with this Mets bullpen. Like it's happened countless times. So I don't blame you for thinking that, but thankfully Diaz did not have to get used in a game like that. That would have been pretty ridiculous. Yeah. That would have been frustrating and we'll talk about Diaz soon, but first we got to talk about this game. Uh, where they ended up losing in the doubleheader. And what's weird about this one is we both said on the podcast that this was the one game we thought we were going to win when Peterson was on the bump. No, I know. And the we opposite happened. That. So exactly. you could thank us because we, <laughs> we we knew what we were doing. We were thinking smart there. But David Peterson, uh, he had a very rough outing, kind of Stephen Matz like to me, where three earned runs, six strikeouts, two walks, eight hits allowed. There are times where he did get out of some trouble, but overall, I mean, he was just not good enough. And it's frustrating because the Mets ended up scoring first in this one too. So mm-hmm. you're feeling good. And was that the uh, the double steal there? Or... Um, no, that was the wild pitch. Right. It was. was yeah. Good. Yeah. The wild pitch to score a run. And then you're, you're thinking, all right, it's Bailey Falter. You got to win this game, right? But David yep. Peterson was <laughs> – not executing his pitches, his uh, slider, he was hanging a few of them. And it was annoying because the Fox broadcast was gassing it up, talking about how electric his slider is. And it just was non-existent at all in the start. And it was upsetting that he only gave uh, – he gave less than five innings in this one. But yeah. Steven Agosik actually kind of picked up the load pretty well in this one, which was nice. Didn't allow a run. Yes, uh, Nagosek had a really good outing, pitched uh, almost two innings, allowed only one run, a couple strikeouts. Hopefully, you know, he could be a little something for this bullpen because God knows the Mets need it. But, yeah, he came in, did his job, and uh, at that point we were just hoping for some offense, which the Mets did not seem to get in this game at all after that first inning getting that run. And they were just shut down from that point on. Holy three hits in this game. Yeah, well, too bad Nagosa got hurt, to your point there about uh, – Yeah, I, I, I completely just, forgot about that, too. Just I, Like, how bad is it now? Yeah, it's got to be I, like I think that. it was an oblique injury, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, oblique strain. So, that yeah. was – I lied him for a good amount of time. And then 
I don't even know still how to pronounce the guy, the name that came into the. Oh, with the, the Z, right? Yeah. You, you have two Z's in your name. I'm not even going to bother with you. Um, <laughs> exactly. The only thing is, uh, the only Z's that I want to talk about is the ones that I caught after this game because they were, uh, <laughs> they were brutal from this game. But uh, he allowed a run in this one. So overall, I mean, the lineup didn't do much. So can't really fault yeah. him. And again, you're with how many games the Mets have played with the rain delay, taking out having to remove Carrasco early, moving uh, Walker early. They have not been in a good spot with their bullpen, so you're going to have names like this thrown out there. And then Michael Givens also. I mean, he held out the fort pretty well. But overall, it, it was embarrassing. How do you get two hits off of Bailey Falter? I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad game for the New York Mets, so maybe – a little fatigued after that. Uh, you know, they've been playing a lot of baseball lately. Double header. Just an off night there for them, for sure. But uh, thankfully with David Robertson, they forced him to pitch two innings in this one because it ended up panning out in the final game of the series, which we'll talk about that now, which this was definitely the most this was some game. game of the series. This was, uh, well, it was the most stressful Uh mm -hmm. I was not okay watching this game, but <laughs> and it was like six hours or so. So that oh, only, between the rain delay, it was it only only made it worse. But we had some cool storylines. I mean, Jose Budo making his <laughs> first major league start. I sure with him. I mean, he was kept in for way too long. Oh yeah, seven earned runs for him. Two walks, five strikeouts, nine hits. He it, it was a sandwich at start. He was. God awful in his first inning. He was good in the middle two, and then he was god awful in his final inning of work. And again, I think that they kept him in for too long. Granted, mm -hmm. at the same time, you your bullpen was burnt out. So, what else were you really going to do? But I thought that he was kept in for too long, and that could have maybe changed things a bit and made life easier. But you know what? They still won, so I'm not going to complain. But that that first inning, I mean, I. That was one where everyone everyone tweeted, you and I both, it's <laughs> just, we're moving on the Monday. Just it. Yeah, I was, uh, this game, I was tweeting like crazy about Butch. I was not happy with him. That first inning took a good 20 minutes or so to get out of. He sent us to the CVS right, right from the jump. Oh, absolutely. Thank <laughs> God, though. We didn't pull the trigger too early on that. Because he was brutal, and then yeah, in the fourth inning, as you said, I, I thought it was a bad decision to keep him in, keep him in against Bohm again, where he hit a three run nuke. But yeah, as you said, there. I mean, what were the options? There was a lot of uh, you know, not a lot of options in the bullpen with how burnt out it was. But uh, yeah, then we had Nate Fisher, who was some uh, story in this game as well. Yeah, Nate Thank Fisher you. was uh, definitely a story. But I do want to quickly uh, point out Bryson Stock. Thank you for. Uh, participating in Jose Budo's first uh, major league strikeout. Thank you for starting his Cy Young tour. <laughs> maybe if your walk-up song was an A-OK, -okay, things would be, uh, things would be A-OK -okay for you. Uh, but, I noticed that. Oh, that. That pissed me off the entire series hearing that song. I was like. That's a terrible walk-up song. I, so I don't bad. understand how Philly fans could listen to that <laughs> for 81 games a year. I would, I'd lose my mind, but uh Regardless, yeah, I mean, the first inning was awful. Alc Bohm, like you said, had that home run. And then Nick Maton, of all people, gets an RBI also. Second yeah. inning, though, the Mets actually got going. Or The folk hero, Michael Perez, he's becoming uh, quite the guy lately. And uh, two, two run RBI single for him again. And like I said, Budo kind of held in nicely. He had Vogelbach at an RBI double in the third inning. Fourth inning comes around. Marte ends up tying the game. We're feeling good. New ball game. Only for Budo to be left in there against Bohm again. And then Bohm just hits the foul pole on this one. Seven to four game. And then the – when was the rain delay? Was that the that – Six? Six or I think it was around the sixth, yeah. Well, yeah, because Nate Fisher was warming up for a while. Then he came into the game and – what what a guy what a guy nate fisher is i mean his his story what what a story yeah he had the rain delay in the six 
and Nate Fisher still comes back out there and he deals. He does. He he was fantastic in this one. I mean, the Mets, you know, they, they tie it up. Michael Perez on the, we said, uh, he brought in two runs. Some lull Phillies is there in the field. Brett Beatty with a pretty terrible slide at home. I don't know if you probably remember that. Yeah. But, hey, Real Muto dropped it. We're not complaining. You know, then uh, we had Vogelbach. You said the double. Marte, Boom makes it 7-4. But then Nate Fisher holds down the four very well and puts us in a position where we could tie the game with a Mark Canna bomb, three-run bomb. Yeah, and they start of something special there. Start of something special there, and yeah, that had me going crazy. I was laying in my bed, defeated after that bomb home run, and then Mark Hanna just ro- woke up everyone woke up, there. up. I I was up in a heartbeat. I was about to do a flip on my bed, but I uh, <laughs> didn't end up doing that. I that wouldn't have ended well. I I thought smart there. But then Gene Segura uh, hits that home this run. This is a devastating blow. Holy. Yep. And Fortnite boy uh, Trevor May <laughs> uh, ended up allowing that home run. But again, Trevor May, thankfully, uh, he got bailed out here because, uh, you know, bro thought Gene Segura, bro thought he did something. Because Jeff McNeil no, got that leadoff no. double, and then Mark Hanna, the the bat flip too. Oh, that was that so run. beautiful! Oh, that made me so happy. Gene Segura thought he won this game, but then <laughs> we get Jeff McNeil on base with a double, and then Mark Hanna. I mean, not enough good things to say about Mark Hanna. He's been so excellent for the Mets. He needs to be in that lineup every day. We've been saying it. And then even Nemo gives us more insurance because this game did get scary, actually, in the bottom of the ninth, believe it or not, with Diaz. Yeah, with Diaz, you thought the door was going to be shut. Everything was going to be good. We wrapped the series up. But unfortunately, he ended his scoreless streak, and Nick Maton ended up getting that sack fly there. And his slider command was just absolutely awful. It was He was all over the place. He needed to settle down. Thankfully, he did to get that Derek Hall strikeout, but... For the most part, it was a nightmarish inning. But if you're gonna end your scoreless streak, at least do it. At least do it now. At least do it now in a game where you still win. I said it on the day, and uh, I'm still happy about that. And you know, at the end of the day, Diaz only pitched like once throughout that entire week. There was just no spot for him to come into the game, especially with the off lack of off days and everything. But, again, he ended up shutting the door. Derek Hall looked stupid up there against that last uh, that last pitch there. Yep, absolutely. I mean, so glad he has shut the door there. Obviously, it sucks the run streak ended. But, as you said, we still won the ball game, so that's all that matters. But, yeah, it's crazy to think it's rare nowadays, Edwin Diaz allowing even one run when it was just such a common occurrence, allowing multiple runs in 2019 not too long ago. Yeah, which uh, he was due to allow a run. Uh, exactly. Again, so do it now. Happen. And David Robertson, like we said, he ended up coming into this game, and it was good that they made him have to work two innings in that uh, night game of the doubleheader because he ended up coming into this game for whatever reason and ended up working out. Yeah. But that's pretty much uh, where the, the good ends because <laughs> they ended up taking – Three out of four here, and at the end of the day, I mean, I was, I, I was satisfied for the most part. Granted, the last game still uh, kind of aggravated me. I still wish they kind of had things go smooth, but it wasn't as frustrating as this series, the Mets Yankee series, Subway series, and where where do we start? <sighs> This is a tough one because, of course, it's against the Yankees. Everyone's hyped for the Mets-Yankees to match up, but this series did just not go well for Mets fans at all. Yeah, and this guy was in the building. He was at one of them. Yeah, that was not fun (laughs) for you. Leaving that stadium, uh, uh, Evan Roberts said on the fan, too, he was like, he just painted it so well, how, like, leaving that stadium, just the insults thrown at you, just – all of that leaving the stadium, it was, it was a tough. You're hanging oh, yeah. your head down, just it was tough. And what pissed me off at this game is some Met fan. 
he's like chirping some Yankee fan going, oh, we're still uh, 2-1 in the series, 2-1 Mets in the series. I'm like, you're the Met fan that watches the Subway series, and that's it, because clearly you don't have a clue how close the Braves are right behind us in the standings. (laughs) If you're trying to be positive about this game, you only care about the Subway Series. If, Because I know Yankee fans like to talk about how Met fans are the only ones that care about the Subway Series, and, apparently, and also say that uh, Met, like this is Met fans' World Series. For that case, yes. That that type of Met fan, yes. It, it is his World Series. That's the only games that matters to him because <laughs> he has no idea how close the Braves are. But this first inning, I mean, it's – you thought it was going to start off well. Brandon Nimmo got hit by a pitch uh, first at bat, and then started Marte hit into what became a theme of the series, double play ball. Uh, yep. And then the Mets just couldn't do anything. And bottom of the first, I don't know if it was retaliation or not. If it was, then Scherzer, you're stupid for this, but I don't think he had intention on this. Uh, ben Intendi got hit, and Judge – didn't have his number for the most part. And for the most part, he didn't. Up until uh, this was the last at bat where he <laughs> didn't really have Scherzer's number. Looked yep. stupid on that slider, which ended up passing uh, Pedro Martinez for Scherzer. So congratulations to him. Would have been better if, you know, it was in a we win. He got yep. his 200th career win this game. But, yeah, and then the Yankees ended up scoring. You had that Anthony Rizzo single. And then... DJ LeMay, you guys sack fly, and this killed me because starting Marte. Marte, what a cannon, but just wasn't enough still. He was too deep. I, I couldn't see because I was at the – because of being there, and they showed just a garbage replay. Did he miss the tag or, like, wh- what even happened there? The ball got – um the ball got to McCann, but then, like, it, it, by time, like, the ball got to him. It, it was a good slide by uh, Ben Intendi. You got to give it to him there. But they, really, no one was at fault there. Actually, it was Nito. Excuse me. Wait. No. No, it was No, it was Nito McCann. It was McCann. Later. Right, right. Yeah, he came in later. But, yeah, it was a good throw. Um, Not really McCann's fault at all there. It just – Good base running by Ben and fast. He got in there. So that was unfortunate. Yeah, and it's just again unfortunate that you hit Ben and because if you get him out, whole different uh whole different scenario inning. there. Third inning, though, Yankees ended up adding another run. Aaron Judge, Judge. of course, hitting the Mickey Mouse porch. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Mickey Mouse porch, the three hundred and eighty-three foot home run, uh short porch of urchin, of course. Uh, but now he ended up uh, hitting that fastball that I, I don't know why Scherzer threw that, but sure. Uh, I mean, there was a couple pitch selections that kind of pissed me off with Scherzer in this one. That wasn't necessarily particularly one of them. I think Judge just kind of took it. He just took a good swing at it and ended up leaving the yard. Yep, it was a good uh, look. Aaron Judge is something. He's a fantastic player. He he was going to get to Scherzer eventually, and he took his opportunity on that slider, hit it to opposite field, and, um, yeah, not fun for Mets fans, to say the least. And it looked like it could have been fun in the fourth inning when you had a leadoff single first pitch yep. from Nemo, and Marte got out, but Lindor got on with a single. Come and on. Pete Alonso. Pete. Who's in a we gotta talk about Pete for a sec, a second here. I mean, what is going on with him? Oh, we're gonna have a whole discussion with him <laughs> after. Don't worry. Uh, there, there's plenty of time because I we have to talk about him next game too. But this game, all he had to do, I tweeted it. All I need you to do is do anything but hit into a double play here, and he hits into a double play. Yep. Absolutely, um, just not what we needed. We we had a perfect opportunity. Multiple opportunities in this game early to get on the board, and we just failed to do so, which is uh, really unfortunate because we're reversing Domingo Yerman. But, you know, we move on. Yep. Um, bottom of the fifth, Yankees ended up adding another run. You let up a double to IKF somehow, uh, and Ben Intendi ends up getting that RBI double, and the, the, this is the pitch with Scherzer that I was so aggravated with. I have no clue what he was doing throwing that cutter in the 0-2 count in the zone. You got to give him something out of the zone there. You, you can't let a guy like mm-hmm. Ben Intendi 
feel good up there. You, you, you got to throw a better pitch. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right down the line. Then uh, IKF. He was on. He was on second. Yeah. Right. Or yeah, and then Gonz- yeah, yeah. no, he was on third because Gonzalez moved him over with the bunt. Oh yeah, that that was a bad pitch out too. Definitely, you don't expect that from Scherzer out of all people, because he's uh, you know, we know what pitcher he is. He he's a smart uh, is a smart uh, way of going about things, and he just threw a bad pitch there. No other way around it. Yeah, and unfortunately, it was a theme throughout most of the night. Sixth inning. Yeah. The Mets couldn't work the count at all against Grimaldi. But then of all people, James McCann did with that insane 12-pitch at bat and then hits a rocket back to Grimaldi. And I don't know if he got hurt on that uh, one, like, significantly, because it looked like it affected him a bit in the next inning because we saw – well, I don't know if it was that, but I think he kind of more got rattled from the error on the Pete Alonso uh, pop-up there where – Cabrera and was it Marwin Gonzalez that collided or was it Judge? Uh, I think it was Judge. Could be mistaken though. Well, regardless, uh, Cabrera got yeah. the error and then uh, Vogi ends up hitting a beaut of a home run and the Met fans there, we're going, we're going wild. We're feeling good. We're feeling we're back in it. Only for the bottom of the seventh. I I. Did not agree with Max Scherzer coming back out in the seventh. I don't know how you feel about that, but I agree. I think his day was over after six innings, but I understand yes. this bullpen is not good, but <laughs> Scherzer clearly didn't have it. Yeah, he was off this game hundred percent. Definitely. I mean, you brought in uh Adavino today, but you could have brought in him uh figured yesterday and uh hopefully would have got the job done, but yeah, I don't know about decision by Buck. I agree, and the velocity was clearly down. He ended up getting uh, two outs with the exception of that uh, IKF single, and I thought right there, going back to the top of the order, perfect time to take Scherzer out and just bring someone else in to get the final out there on Benintendi, who mm-hmm. clearly was having it against Max Scherzer, and we saw it again. Uh, this one wasn't even a bad pitch from Scherzer. He left this low in the zone and Benintendi still somehow ended up hitting this one. And yeah. Uh, and then judge ended up getting a single that ended up being it. May came in, got a strikeout, which wow, when surprising. May came in, I, I was prepared. I, I wasn't, I, I was nervous. I was nervous. That's for sure. But if Trevor may could get back to being effective, then Hey, then that would be great. Eighth no inning. complaints from us. Eighth inning, Brett Beatty gets the leadoff walk, and then Tyler Naquin. I I don't know what to say about Tyler Naquin. I I don't no. I I don't like this guy. I don't. No. It's funny because he had a he had such a promising uh, start with the Mads after the trade, but now he just looks lost at the place, swinging a spaghetti noodle up there. Bad, just nah, he can't see the field much anymore at this rate. Uh, this trade deadline by the day is looking worse yeah. and worse, but it is. Yeah, the Mets couldn't get anything going there. And uh, I mean, Michael Givens, thank you for having a solid inning because that was also nice. If yeah. Michael Givens could get consistent, that would be great as well. I mean, the bullpen wasn't really an issue at all in this series at mm-hmm. all, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. if he could get going, that'd be. Great ninth inning. The Mets didn't even put together any competitive at bats, and Vogi oh, ended up striking out, and that capped the umpire's night off for a, what was a garbage night. A pitch just so low in the zone, and uh, that they punched him out on. Um, it is what it is. I didn't. The, it's not like the Mets were gonna rally at all. Yeah, there, exactly. but Scherzer by far is worst start as a Met, six and two thirds, and he allowed seven hits, four in runs, one walk, three three strikeouts, which is just like. When you see that from Scherzer, you you gotta double check to make sure that you're reading that right because very uncharacteristic. Absolutely, Scherzer didn't have it this game. One bad, rare bad start from him. But honestly, like it's not even the worst start in the world for like an average pitcher. But Max Scherzer standards, you expect uh, definitely a lot better. So bad for him. Yeah. And even if he did pitch well, I mean the 
lineup was just abysmal. I mean, you had the home run from Vogie. That was about it. No one was getting on. Lindor, Nimmo, McCann, of all people, too, were the only ones that got hits that game. And it, it was just a rough game. And you figured, all right, game two, move on. Hopefully you get to Montas, who's kind of been struggling as a Yankee. Hasn't uh, exactly been a popular guy in the Bronx. So, granted, I mean, they get mad if a guy goes like, I don't know. They they get mad at the littlest things over there. So um, just to take a jab at Yankee fans a bit there. But uh, Taiwan Walker versus Montas. We all wanted DeGrom, but at the end of the day, I mean, Taiwan Walker, I don't know if you could have got really much better from what he gave you today. I, I, I don't know. I agree. He pitched a very good uh, game overall, in my opinion. Of course, Judge goes yard again. He let up another run that inning, but he put the Mets in a very good position to win this ball game. There's no excuse for the Mets offense not to do more than what they did today off uh, Frankie Montas. And it was just painful because the first inning, it looked like they were going to get something going. You get the Marte single, you get Lindor on. Pete. And then Pete. Again. Pops out in foul territory, too. Um, and then. That bogey, bogey strike, I was frustrating that was uh and also i think there was a pitch in there that was just a brutal call if i remember that might have yeah. been a later at bat but i think it's one i wanted the dirt uh, too with three balls so yeah, the, the plate approaches this entire series like there was that bet with Marte in this game where i ended up tweeting it too where he's ended up swinging at some garbage in the dirt but then some pitch on the black he's just taking that all the way i'm like are we are we serious right now mm -hmm. i know the umpire was awful in this game but regardless uh and then second inning same sort of scenario that we've had all series long like i said this became a theme you had two on no out and Beatty ends up getting out you get runners on the corner though because he ended up beating out the uh the throw there and then tomas nito double play inning over that was a theme and it continued then five consecutive Mets struck out. Uh, nice. Love that. Yep. Right? And Absolutely fun. Fourth inning, Ben Intendi gets a single because that's just what he's doing. He, he just killed us this entire series. Well, maybe they've gotten to a double play and then Judge sends one Great to Mars. Too. I, yeah, unfortunate. Listen, I know, I know we kind of just compliment the tie on Walker, but this pitch, I, I don't understand. You're throwing it right in his wheelhouse. You are. No one's on. No one's on base, and he got two outs. You can't leave it in his wheelhouse. Especially knowing you, the hitter you have at the plate right there. Bad. That, that's the one mistake Tylon Walker had in this game. It was not uh, – and it was costly. But Well, not you – know. not, not costly. Yeah. Just the, the final score. But, yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. Mm -hmm. I think another costly thing is you end up blowing the bases then and then you walk as Waldo Cabrera. I mean, yep. come on. <laughs> come on, man. Like, uh, that was that was a tough look there. Um, fifth inning, though, the Mets actually scored a run, believe it or not. Mark Hanna gets a double to lead things off. Beatty gets on from catcher's interference. And Nito lays a beautiful bunt because – Anthony Rizzo was pretty much playing as the catcher there. He was he was right next to Frankie Montas, closer mm -hmm. to the plate than that. He was a line drive to him. He would have got absolutely just killed there on that, but that's a whole different oh. discussion. But uh, Marte then ended up getting an RBI single to make things two to one. So got a little bit of hope. Six inning, they gave more hope because Jeff McNeil got an RBI double. After Pete slammed his bat from the last at bat, so the new bat did wonders. He got a single, and then Jeff McNeil ended up getting that RBI double. Lugo came in for Walker. We got to hype up Lugo. Lugo looked great. He did, honestly. I, I We need this Seth Lugo. We really uh, do. I mean, he uh, he did his job, man. That's all that I got to say. That curveball was disgusting. 
it was it was 100 percent those back-to-back punch outs and yeah then the this was the one that really aggravated he walked glaber torres and then glaber steals two bases whatever but that donaldson at bat i i'm trying to understand how that got to three tail there was one pitch out of the zone one and it got to three tail yeah, bad work there. Uh, that was unfortunate. Uh, Donaldson, you know, he's he's been struggling, and uh, it's just inexcusable. Yeah, I mean, thankfully you got him out, but the umpire there, I I don't understand how you how you get that to a three two count with one yeah. pitch out of the zone, but it doesn't matter. Thankfully, it didn't really have an impact on the game. Uh, what did is the Mets. The, this too, I mean. Seventh inning, Beatty gets a leadoff single. And then this just shows that I said in my video, this shows that Buck has no confidence in this lineup. He's electing to bunt again with Tomas Nito. <laughs> what does that tell you about this lineup right now? I, if that doesn't tell you he has no confidence, I don't know what will. And I'm going to be honest. I still think Michael Perez should have got a look in this game. He was doing good in that Philly series and get a lefty in that stadium. Uh, get a lefty hitting catcher there. Yeah, I don't know, man. These catchers are a lost cause for the New York Mets. That's why. I don't That's care we had to give up at that deadline. Yeah, this is another topic, but you, you should have got Wilson Contreras. I don't care if you had to give up Vientos. Like, this Mets team, in my opinion, just had to go all in, but this catcher is really like just. Oh, oh I mean, the deadline. Well, well, I'll rant about that after this. Uh, <laughs> the fish recap in this game because seventh inning, Joelli comes in, and I, I for once was not actually worried with Joelli coming in. I, I was feeling good about Joelli. He allows a leadoff single. You get that sack bunt, and then yeah, we had a and disaster then, oh, and in then the, the field. Uh-oh. And then the uh oh. Jose Trevino ends up getting that bloop little single because Pete Alonso cannot catch the baseball at all. And should that have been his ball though? Like I, it should have been Marte. Marte's running in. He's an outfielder. Let him play the pop fly there. I Pete shouldn't have even bothered there. I <sighs> yeah, frustrating. I mean. Too many of these communication problems in the field seem to be happening. Marte should have called them off, made the catch, and uh, we could be talking about a different ball game, maybe. And then Ben and Tendi ended up again uh, kills us. Yeah, uh, ends up getting an RBI single, and people were crucifying the Joelli decision. But uh, who one? Who were you going to go to? If you want to argue, Seth Lugo should have pitched another inning because you have the off day. Sure, but at the end of the day, I I don't have a problem with them. They should have been out of the inning. It shouldn't have been what it was regardless. Um, and either way, the offense was just abysmal regardless. So, Also, I realized we forgot to mention, talk about in the fifth inning. Beatty had another kind of brutal slide there. Joey Cora, I, I want whatever he's smoking lately because I don't know what that send was on in the fifth inning there. It was a bad send, 100%. Baby, there was realistically no chance in hell he was scoring there. Bad decision. Yeah, he's he's not been good as of lately, 100% on uh, the third base. Yeah, and that slide was just brutal. We but... thought, thought Beatty was him. I'm sure we'll talk about that as well. But I don't know. His time could be coming to now with the Mets uh, pretty soon and being sent back down. Yeah. Well, you're pretty much talking about every talking point that I had. So. We'll... <laughs> yeah, I'll save it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're good. But it's uh good that we're on the same page here that we both had uh wanted to hit these talking points because it exactly. will uh fill up the time a bit more. But Aaron Judge, of course, gets uh a single again, and everyone knew it was wraps there. You might as well start heading mm-hmm. to the CVS because it was uh it was over there, and then top eight, of course, he gets some hope. Yeah, yeah, you get hope. Two on, no out. Double play. Well, did you expect anything less? Yep, and then Jeff McNeil had some, had a hit that looked good off the bat, but uh, obviously didn't matter. And Ottavino 
he looked Does pretty he uh job? he looked pretty sharp. He allowed that hit to so judge, I know, but I, I'm still mm-hmm. not mad. He yeah, he sh- probably should have hung a slider there and judge, but when it made the difference. And then the ninth inning. Two outs and then uh oh, uh oh, blue balls. Tyler Naquin works back from a one two count to walk. Brandon Nimmo gets a single. Runners on the corners. Starring Marte works back from an 0-2 count. Walks. And Lindor. Well, Wandy Peralta comes in for Schmidt there. And Lindor that ball hit the puts line. up probably the worst at bat I brutal. ever could have imagined. Uh, the first pitch should have been a ball. No yeah, that was a bad call. Um, outside of that, he was swinging at everything, and it was he a bad almost bat. got lucky with that ball down the line, just barely going foul. Uh, I was jumping out of my seat. I thought that was going to be a fair ball off the bat into the corner, but did not seem to be the case. Nope, and Mets dropped this one. Failed to get to 80 wins still. The Braves are now two games back. Great. Um, but yeah, overall, I with this game, I'm definitely frustrated from this entire series, but I'm going to try oh. to give them the benefit of the doubt. You have an off day now, and you're playing the Rockies. If there's going to be a team that you start to build your confidence up against again, let it be the Rockies, but I, I really need them to win this series against the Rockies, and I need them to play competitive baseball against the Dodgers because if they don't, I'm going to be a bit worried. Yep, I agree. They have to at least take three out of four against the Rockies. Dodgers series is three games, right? Not four. Yeah. Would be massive if you could take two out of three there. Um, how are we going to be seeing Scherzer and DeGrom? Well, we have Scherzer DeGrom on the bump tomorrow. So, yeah, he'll be pitching that series. Scherzer, he will be as well, right? Uh, the Dodgers one? He he has to be lined up, no? Actually, I don't know. Uh, maybe that last game. Yeah, he's lined up to pitch the second game. Oh, so perfect. DeGrom Scherzer. I would love to take two out of three against the Dodgers. That's going to show a lot because these are – uh, well, the Dodgers are probably undoubtedly the best team in the NL. And then, you know, the Mets are right up there. So this could be a preview of, like, possibly the NLCS, I hope. Hopefully. But, yeah, uh, I mean, we kind of did this preview the Rocky series. Uh, we won at least three out of four. You have DeGrom in the first game. Game two, Bassett. Bassett, I believe. Guess. Yes. Game three, Who's even going to pitch game three? Um, yeah, it's probably going to be someone like... Peterson. Peterson, maybe. Trevor Williams. I don't know if I could even... Yeah, no, they haven't announced anyone. It's probably going to be Peterson or someone else. I mean, I'm hearing talks that they might sign Garrett Richards. Really? Sure. Yeah, uh, there was a report that came out during the game that uh, Billy Epler might want since he uh, yeah the Angels can yeah with the there. Angels yeah he yeah. wants to he might look into that which listen I mean Garrett Richards I'd rather someone that's at least pitching the major leagues versus Jose Budo pitch another game for the Mets I that just me personally but True. regardless I, I need three out of four at the very least if you get four that'd be even better. You got to start taking advantage of these bad teams. You you got a lot of them coming up, but especially the Rockies, you got to do this, especially with the Braves down your neck. Have to. Yeah, I agree. Totally agree with that. Get the offense going, but let's uh get to some of the talking points that we were. So I want to ask this, who is having the worst slump, Nimmo or Alonzo? <sighs> This is tough. I think Nemo has been picking it up more lately. If you asked me this, like, before, like, the back end of the Philly series, I would have said Nemo, but Alonzo, man. Ever since, like, the start of the Phillies, 
even a little more back, you could track back with Alonzo. I I think he's just been brutal. He has one homer in what the last like twenty. Yeah, and that's Mo- not enough. Yeah, he's he. We need him to you know give us home runs. We haven't been hitting a lot of those lately. We rely on him for those uh, grounding out into a lot of double plays, making errors in the field. Just nothing's going right for Alonzo right now. The off day hopefully will be crucial from tomorrow. And then having the Rockies, I think, is a good opportunity for him to really pick up the slack. But, yeah, my answer is uh, Alonzo there. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree. And at the same time, this is where I ask, why did Billy Epler and crew not get another difference maker bet? Because if Alonzo – well, not if, because Alonzo's in the slump. If you had a difference maker bet, though, to back up Alonzo here – You can afford slump, that a little bit. Yeah, you have a little more room to work with here. And if you get a J.D. Martinez, if you get someone along those lines, Trey Mancini, whatever, if you get a guy like that who makes a difference, you, again, like you said, could afford it. And it's just frustrating that they didn't do enough. And now uh, Vogue has a hamstring problem, so he's not even running out ground balls as much. Who knows if it's going to affect his hitting a bit. So I'm... I'm a bit worried. I'm a bit worried when it comes to that. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm Darren Ruff does not look great. He's looked better on the mound than at the plate. <laughs> I agree with that 100%. This man. I this don't understand. Line has just been a, a Just looking worse and worse as the day, as you said. Listen, I mean, the bullpen has looked sharp, but at the same time, like everyone crucifies Buck for the decision he makes for the bullpen, but who do you, what would satisfy anyone? Who do you want him to bring into the game? Because he can't use Diaz and Ottavino every game. Mm-hmm. Who is he going to bring in that's going to satisfy you in the seventh inning? Because he's not going to use Ottavino Diaz for every single game the remainder of the way, uh, eighth, ninth, or seven, eight, nine, and get multiple outs from them. It's just unrealistic. So. You got to point the finger at Epler. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Which kind of carries over. What is the level of panic right now? If you had to put it on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 to 10. Um, I'm at I'm at a smack in the middle. I would say 5 out of 10. Uh, I'm concerned with how streaky this lineup is. Uh, like... There's just days the top five in your lineup are just going over four at the plate. Um, the pitching, the bullpen, obviously we know has been bad, but I still have high hopes for this team. If you put it into perspective, it's a really good lineup. It's deep. When these hitters are, you know, doing what they need to do, they're uh, very good. So you have that. You have your two aces, of course. Walker, hopefully Carrasco coming back sometime soon. Tyler McGill going in that bullpen. I think going into the postseason, this Mets team will be uh, in a good spot. But right now, yeah, I'm feeling a little nervous. I go, yeah, in the middle of five. I myself would probably go six, leaning leaning seven, because of the fact that this lineup has just not been cutting it. They clearly didn't do enough at the deadline, which we said it enough, because like you said, the lineup's streaky. But if they added a difference maker – then you could afford to have some of these guys go in the slumps like we just talked about. But, uh, yeah, Tyler Naquin has just not been good. Darren Ruff has been probably worse, which I said at the time, and I'll keep saying it, it made no sense to move J.D. Davis with prospects for Darren Ruff when they're pretty much the same player, except J.D.'s way younger and has proven before that he could be an effective hitter. I still don't understand the move to this day. Uh, And yeah, they clearly didn't do enough. The bullpen is still obviously shaky. It's a problem when we're worried about whoever's running out from the bullpen, unless it's Diaz or Ottavino. And yeah, I'm just worried about that. However, where the panic kind of is dialed down is after the Dodgers, or excluding the Dodgers in general, I should say, The schedule, for the most part, is very easy of the Brewers in there. But outside of that, you play the Pirates, you play the Cubs, you play the Marlins, you play the Nationals. These should be games that you're winning. And if they could just go win the series, you don't have to sweep. 
You're in control of the division right now. Just win the series going along the way, and you should be in good control here, which a sweep here and there would be nice just to make sure that you're really pushing yourself ahead of the Braves. But again, just two out of three. Two out of three, or if you're playing a four-game series, three out of four, and you're feeling good about yourself, that's where the panic kind of lays off. And if uh, this team needs to win the division, though, early. I'll say that. They need to find a way to win the division like a week before the playoffs because if Vogelbach is still having this hamstring problem, then he's going to need to rest. You need, you're going to need some of these guys to get some rest with the amount of injuries. Yeah. And especially knowing that you play the Braves uh, at the end of the season, I think you, they're the, your second to last series. I really don't want to be in a position where like that's the uh, division. Yeah. yeah. You don't exactly. want it to be that. If anything, I want those games to be where the Mets have a chance Perhaps I, I don't think it will happen just given the uh, gap in games with the Braves and the Phillies. But if the Phillies could scrape some wins up against the Braves and those two just battle it out in the wild card instead, if there's that series could become a scenario where the Mets could knock the Braves down to a lower seed, that would make me uh, that would make me feel great. Because then if you knock them down, if you could somehow knock them down to that bottom seed. And then if they win that wild card round, they have to play the Dodgers. Good luck to them. Yep, I agree with that. That would be huge. I don't see it still. The Braves are just rolling. Yeah, because the Padres also would have to pick it up, and I just don't see that. Yeah, Padres are a mess right now between Tatis being suspended. Hater looks like a mess. The Padres are in a bad spot for sure right now. And didn't Soto get scratched from the lineup last minute today? Like something's going on there too. Really? I did not see that. Yeah, the Padres are uh, not some looking shambles. too hot right now. And then Brandon Jury, I think, has also kind of been struggling. And I, I cannot believe someone said the other day, uh, I forgot where I saw it, but someone was like uh, clowning the Mets for willingly get rid of, uh, getting rid of Brandon Jury. Like, I'm sorry, Brandon Jury was a career bench piece <laughs> most of his career. I don't know what you uh, what you want there, but yeah. Exactly. He was nothing special for the Mets whatsoever. He went to uh, the Reds, right? He started yeah. doing good. So went to the Padres. You know, the Padres seem willing to just go all in here, but now it's kind of coming to bite them in the ass pretty badly. And also, color me, I'm shocked. Brandon Drury did well in a hitter-friendly park, and now that he's out of that uh, ballpark, he's not doing as well. Wow, I'm, Shocker. I'm shocked. But, uh, yeah, I mean, for the panic to – just saw the question there. Yeah, for me, 6.5, I'd say, leaning more towards a 7 there. Mm-hmm. But next question, should Beatty remain in the MLB once Escobar returns? You told me this question five days ago. I would say absolutely, but it just doesn't look like he's MLB ready. He's uh, he. Uh, we know he was a little bit of a shaky fielder. He's made some good plays in the field, but, again, he's nothing uh, – so extraordinary. He's had his uh, bad moments as well. Um, at the plate, I mean, he's struggling ever since uh, that Braves game where he hit the homer in his first at bat. Uh, I don't know. It's just been a bunch of ground outs. Uh, nothing too competitive at the plate. I think uh, you got to roll with Escobar probably here as much as I don't want to say. You got to just keep Beatty down in the Syracuse the rest of the year and uh, just ride with Escobar. Yeah, I agree. And uh, this is also just an excuse for me to rant about a tweet that I saw because someone was like, it's amazing to me how all these Met fans are so quick to give up on Beatty. Nobody's giving up on him. Nobody's giving up on Brett Beatty. It's just that right now, he's clearly not ready. Now's not the time. Let him go back to the minor leagues and work on some things because did we not learn from Ahmed Rosario? When Ahmed Rosario was struggling clearly when they called him up in 2017 and they didn't send him down, they let him just suffer up here in the MLB because, quite frankly, they didn't have any talent on that 2017 team to begin with. At least this team has competent baseball players. Out in 2017, they were running Steve, uh, or Noria Yoki out there for <laughs> every game. Like, y- you can't tell me that team was competitive. But Ahmed Rosario, top prospect of baseball, and they let him just rot and struggle in the MLB. And I think it had an impact on the fact that he was not – that effective of a player when he was here. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. 
So yeah, I to me it's a no brainer that you do that. And someone was saying, oh, would, you'd rather Yolmer Sanchez and Brett Beatty. Um, it's not that. It's the fact that I don't want Beatty's confidence killed. I'd rather mm-hmm. Beatty regain his confidence down in Syracuse. That'll be a but, tough tough spot for the kid as well. Like you're putting him in the second half of the season, fighting for the division. Like you know, starting fresh next season, I think is the best case scenario. Yeah, I agree with that. Let him be your opening day third baseman. Move Escobar in that money. Let you open up some space there. Uh, although, granted, I mean, you maybe if you could get Trey Turner here, you know, he might start third base for you, or Jeff McNeil might move over. I, I don't know, but they could Flip get creative right once there. Trey Turner's here. But mm-hmm. speaking of uh, prospects, should the Mets call up Alvarez and or Vientos? Uh, I, 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 as much as I want to call up Alvarez, I don't know. I, you know what? Fuck it. I, I, I want the Mets to call Francisco Alvarez. He's just been tearing it up, and I'm sick of just watching the same cycle. McCann, Perez, uh, Nito just lost causes at the play. Like, I'm sure Francisco Alvarez, like, you're putting the kid in another tough spot, but. He's been tearing it up. I think it, you could have a lot of upside here. I think you could really, really hit. Like, I think Alvarez could be something special as well in the MLB. But I would, I would try it. I would just give it a try at least. If he's struggling, send him back down. But as for Alvarez, I think I would. Vientos, I think I'd hold off. Uh, this is a tough one because I'm kind of leaning more the other way, where I maybe consider Vientos because Darren Ruff has just been abysmal and he couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat and you need someone that could do something against left-handed pitching because Darren Ruff has just been useless for the most part against them uh, in that role and maybe you get a spark plug there at the DH at the same time he can't play defense so I understand that aspect of it uh to me it's just if Vientos was so valuable at the trade deadline that you couldn't move him to go out and get, because we shouldn't be even having this question. We should be in a scenario where Christian Vasquez or uh, yeah. or Wilson Contreras is on the roster. Christian Vasquez went for nothing, basically. I don't know where the Mets were on that, but I, I don't know where they were all deadline to begin with. So they could have made that trade. But if Vientos was the guy that they didn't want to move to go out and get a Wilson Contreras, then what, why aren't we bringing him up? Why aren't we bringing him up? This team needs to be urgent in a pennant race, and you might as well bring him up. He's tearing it up with the bat, and his fielding is awful, yes, but his bat is definitely major league ready, where with Alvarez, I'm not so sure because he has been struggling. I know he hit that home run tonight, but he's been struggling for the most part in AAA, and also – Catcher is so different because you have to learn a whole pitching staff and everything. I'm more on the fence with Alvarez, but Vientos, I mean, what do you have to lose by bringing up another bat? And if if Alvarez does come up to be the DH, sure, okay, maybe fine. But you cannot have – I don't think you could have him catch, but you can't keep going with what you have right now with Darren Roth, Tyler Naquin up there. They're they're not good. They're awful. Agreed. But uh, last thing that we're going to talk about. <laughs> Sports Talk Atlanta was hurt by Nico. Uh, so, that uh, bum. <laughs> if he's watching this, we, have, we, we got some beef right now, my guy. <laughs> so Sports Talk Atlanta. I, do we have the context? Of this? He, do we, I didn't even see that the original tweet was play narco. When, when yeah, was he that? pissed me off. He he just and the, the Mets live so run free in this guy's head after they after they lost. Was that after the tweets, loss? Yeah, he tweets like ten things about the Mets. He says play narco, and I just had enough. I had to go in on him. <laughs> Soon, a couple minutes after, I see you've been quote tweeted by Sports Talk LA, and I was pretty shocked because this guy's verified. He's got a uh, quite the clout. But it was yeah, it's pretty funny to say the least. And you replied to. Just for the uh, viewers here, it's all right. Your Mickey Mouse schedule is almost done soon. Now we have our easy schedule. Good luck catching up, buddy. And this, someone... I, his his quote tweet was 
I didn't even understand it. To be quite uh, honest. We'll get to that in a second, yeah. but I want to see the replies to your tweet here. Yeah, I, I was looking if I was getting some backup. I think I got a bit. Let's see this. Kevin on this tweet, uh, just under the reply, not the quote tweet from uh, him, but Kevin says, y'all are, uh, uh, y'all are breaking bad teams out of slumps. We are putting good teams in them. Nice 10-game stretch. Um, okay, it's not like the Yankees were going to inevitably heat up again. They're just a good baseball team. But sure. And yeah, we, we put the Phillies on a, on a hot stretch here. Sure, you got us. It's out there playing. One, it's not like we won the series. And two, it's not like we were they were playing the Cincinnati Reds or anything. So sure, Absolutely. whatever uh, makes you feel better. And are they still playing? Yeah, they're still playing the Reds, and they almost lost tonight, too. They had a walk-off hit late, but all right. Mm-hmm. Next, so it says, easy, like the Mets and Astros in back-to-back series. Funny guy. Funny guy. He thinks he's very but, funny. But, hey, I mean, if you have us going to the NLCS, I mean, hey, I'll take that. Yeah, really. Thank you very much, uh, Walker LV2000. Yeah, thank you for that. Also, uh, <laughs> K Beck 0019 was the first tweet. And then we got Braves baseball uh, is at is JF uh, Medlin. And he says, one five out of the seven versus the top record in the AL and the second best record in the NL, Mickey Mouse schedule. <laughs> now listen. So he's talking about the Ashes and the Mets, huh? Yeah. So listen, friend. Um, Oh, so that was the back-to-back that other guy was talking about. Not, uh, mm. I thought he was saying, like, in the playoffs. Yeah. Okay, but you're still uh, hyping up the Mets as a good team then. So, mm-hmm. I don't understand your Very point there. Good. And uh, I'd slow your roll there because uh, there are a couple of good teams that you got that the uh, Braves are going to be playing come September. They're playing the Mariners a bit who have been good. The Giants, you can't count them out. Phillies have also been pretty competitive, and then we'll see again at the end of the month. And also the Cardinals could also be sneaky. So uh, I'd slow your roll there. Slow your roll. There's a reason 162 games are played. Yep. Uh, and then Kev 2-1-3-1 keeps it <laughs> This one's straight to the point. Another dumbass Met fan. <laughs> Respect. Respect, but fuck, yep. fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and then Raul at R A. Uh, G U I R R E J R one nine zero three says it's going to suck. We can't play the Mets all the time. Well, clearly you forgot who won that five game series, but sure. And clearly yeah. we're just going to ignore the fact that the Mets have like a, what is it? Like 40 something wins against divisional opponents this year, but whatever helps you sleep at night, we'll, we'll roll with that one. But uh, oh, sure. Well. So let's get to the quote tweet now. And it says, Met fans complain about the schedule like I complain about battery liquor prices. Um, <laughs> like, how old is this thing? I, I, I mean, is this a grown man? That, it has to be. I mean, I don't know what's worse. If this is a grown man or, like, I, I don't know what's worse. But regardless, um, Met fan, I don't, where was, uh, where were you complaining about the schedules when I'm trying to figure out? He says, Met fans complain about the schedule. <laughs> Nobody complained about the schedule, brother. We're just stating <laughs> that you guys played the teams like the Oakland A's, the Pirates, and you play garbage teams during that 12 game winter. Yeah, they played the Rockies, A's, Pirates, and Nationals during that huge win streak that they had earlier in the year, and the Diamondbacks. I forgot to. Mention them. Joke. Absolutely but, joke. And they still lost that series. But they but the last game they won that kickstarted their win streak. They then won the four game series against the Rockies, one two over Oakland, and then swept the Pirates and Nationals. But n- nobody was complaining about the schedule. We were just talking about the level of competition that you guys faced in that part Absolutely. of the schedule. But sure. Um Braves fans won't get that through the back of their head. Nope. Um but nobody was complaining about the schedule and if anything we're happy that our schedule is lightening up and that was kind of the point that you made in the tweet that our schedule yep. is going to be it gets easy so we'll yeah. see what happens now uh and 
hey, if we can't capitalize on the weaker part of our schedule, then we'll be the first to admit it. Yeah, and I'll come we'll right back to, to it. it. <laughs> but I'm not expecting it at all. I think uh, we're we're winning this division. I have full, I saw full confidence in saying that. So someone quote tweet this quote tweet. I didn't see this. Someone's account is Sports Talk NYM. It's just like a parody account of that. <laughs> no way. That's great. It's, I'm gonna find this. I'm liking this in instant seconds. <laughs> oh, is this like a like tweeting? a troll to the guy? Because yeah, like he's I, I guess it is. That's, that's gotta fucking, be a troll. That's gold. Little buddy drunk tweeting hyped about <laughs> still being two games back. That's funny. Everyone knows the Braves will come up just short. Something you know a lot about. Oh man, that's sad. That's an instant like. Let's see the I'm replies. That too. Let's see the replies to this tweet though. Uh, Atlanta girl says at uh, Carol C two one three five three six nine five. Please shorten your at. I, uh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> with all those numbers, what's the point? Uh, Rockies for four, followed by the Dodgers for three. Um, easy schedule. MLB is not easy. I assume you're looking at the Nets. Pirate. Oh, okay. So, wait. What? I assume you're looking at the Nets, Pirates, and Marlins after next week. I I'm not sure what the point is. Um. Yeah. Oh. Wait. wait, wait oh, the point is that you're saying the Mets have an easy schedule. Well, y- y- yeah, we are talking about after they play the Dodgers. If if you had any clue that it's uh nearby i mean the season's been going pretty quick um so yeah i think that's pretty obvious that we're not including the dodgers i don't think yeah. anyone's everyone's saying, saying that bad team but yeah. sure um everyone's just saying in these uh replies that someone should tell them that's are playing the dodgers next week yeah we're well aware we're well aware cooper um <laughs> the we're well aware that the, the the Dodgers are in town this coming week. Um, again, nobody's taken the Dodgers lightly. We, we never said it. <laughs> Nobody said it. Yep. You, you said that yourself. Nobody was – not one person. You did not say the tweet, oh, we got an easy schedule, <laughs> especially those Dodgers. I can't wait to play them. <laughs> Smack them up for three games. Nobody exactly. said it. Exactly. <laughs> yep. uh, let's see what else we got. Uh yeah, it's going to be a tight finish regardless. I'm not even looking too far ahead in September simply due to the fact that the division will be decided in the final series between us. Okay, so this guy's just being... I uh, missed the captain, control. obvious. But um, at least being respectful. Uh, Chase Edwards, let's see what you got. They aren't very good schedule <laughs> watchers because we have the same easy games they do. We have a West Coast tri- uh, West Coast road trip left. And the boys fuck regardless of coast, so we're right where we want to be. Just hope we don't have a Dodger situation like last year of fatigue in the playoffs. Well, well, Chase, um, you're missing the whole point of the tweet here. The whole point of Nico's tweet here is that the Mets have an easy schedule and they're in the lead of the division. If you understand how math works i know it's not everyone's strongest subject i get it believe me i i was bad at history we all have our bad (laughs) subject but if you understood math right if the mets just control their own destiny and win games and the braves can't then the braves can't catch up that's how this works the mets just have to keep winning and if they play bad teams the chances are better of them winning so the point is good luck catching us (laughs) because we're gonna keep winning you understand, Chase? If you're, Simple I, concept. If you're having a hard time understanding, I don't know what to tell you. Um, you are probably then at that point the age of 14 or under, maybe 13, somewhere yeah. in that range. But listen, I, I understand. Math is not easy for everyone. I, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt there because everyone has their uh, subject they're not good at. <laughs> Joined uh, uh, November 2011. Sorry to cut you off, but I just saw I clicked on his count. He joined November 2011, so he's definitely not 14. So that's pretty embarrassing. Uh, yeah, um, I, I understand it. I understand that's hard. I, I can understand that. Uh, it's difficult. Listen, maybe yeah. he's, he dropped out of school. Maybe, maybe he's got a different career. Who knows? Which good maybe. for you. Good for you with whatever you're doing. But uh, I, I hope it doesn't involve math because otherwise. You probably are changing your job often. 
<laughs> Latin says, we just took three out of four from them. Is he calling his own team a Mickey Mouse team? I'm confused. No, Latin. We are saying that your Mickey Mouse schedule is over and you guys face the bad teams and you still didn't catch up to us in the division. And now that it's over and we're playing the bad teams, we have a better chance of securing the lead in the NL East. Again, simple concept. I know. It, I know it could be difficult to follow, but we're calling we're, nobody called any team Mickey Mouse. The only thing that was called Mickey Mouse was the schedule. Read, let me read it again to you, uh, Latin. From that sports maniac says, It's all right. Your Mickey Mouse schedule is almost done soon. Now, well, period. Now we have our easy schedule. Good luck catching up, buddy. Period. To crying Cry face emojis. emojis. Got out of emojis. <laughs> but it, it was not, it's all right. Your Mickey Mouse comma. It was all right. Your Mickey Mouse schedule. There was no comma there. Nobody called your team Mickey Mouse. Relax. Pump the brakes. We're not calling the Mets Mickey Mouse. We're not calling you Mickey Mouse. We, we can admit the Braves are a good team. But we're saying for the division that your Mickey Mouse schedule is over. So catching up is not going to be as easy. And then SDP to wrap things up. I'm pretty sure you all play the Dodgers next week. You easy. all, you all well, play the Dodgers. <laughs> well, um, it's if you're gonna say, it, say it, say y'all, or say you guys play the Dodgers next week, or say the Mets play the Dodgers next week, whatever correct way you want to put it. But again, I, I know certain subjects is not everyone's uh strong suit so maybe it's not english but uh no we we're well aware like we said we're well aware the dodgers are in town this week we're well aware and uh if we weren't then or, or no 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 you're right we're, we're excited for the dodgers we're gonna win all three games they they suck yep. they suck they're yeah. awful walker bueller's getting tommy john they, they don't have any <laughs> talent to back him up at all mm-hmm. i want to see the quotes fascinating how many people just like took this tweet the whole another way i mean i i mean it, it is what it is reading is not um not everyone's strongest uh strongest thing here especially twitter i mean twitter you're not gonna get oh we yeah let me see the quote tweet from your tweet so this guy uh boo daniels too why y'all complain about the schedule like it's not the same for every NL East team? Nobody complained about the schedule again. <laughs> like, it's just stating where, you're where in is a the bad part of it. Oh my god! <laughs> I can't. I can't. Nobody complained, brother. Nobody's complaining. Again, I'll, I'll break it down one more time for the Brave fans listening. All right, listen. I, I need headphones up, volume all the way up, everything. All right. Look at me in the eyes, all right? The point is, you guys had your turn to play the Oakland A's, to play the Pittsburgh Pirates, to play the Washington Nationals as much as he did, to play all those bad teams, to play the Rockies, to play those teams. Now it is our turn. Mm -hmm. And with our turn, we are saying the easier the opponent, the easier it is to win. We are not talking about the Dodgers to make that clear. (laughs) <laughs> Again, but what we're talking about those teams in particular that we play and the Marlins, okay? You're following still? Good. Uh, we're going to win more games with the easier opponents. You figure, right? So the point is good luck catching us if we win more games because we're in the division lead. The more we win and the more you guys lose, the bigger the lead gets. If you're understanding that concept or – if we both just keep winning, we still are in the lead because we control our own destiny right now. Glad you're following. Great uh, explanation. Maybe I got to reply and send that. To, uh, and reply to everyone <laughs> yeah. with the podcast, send the timestamp. Yeah. Re- <laughs> screen record it, send it to the freaking quote tweet. Let all these brave fans know because clearly they're Brave not fans. grasping it. Rain hate on us. Rain hate. I, yeah, we I, want I it all. It. I'd love to hear it. We, because then we'll just come back on the next episode, read all the comments you guys leave, and do the same thing. We'll just do the same thing. <laughs> this is, uh, I mean, 
it's there wasn't really a lot of fair art like there wasn't any valid points made at all i mean you had that one guy who was captain obvious and i mean that's yeah. pretty much about it for any like I competent really comments. missed the point and that's about it <laughs> um yeah it's like that gif where it says you at the point and then it's just flying over the guy's head it's <laughs> that. but uh but yeah i mean it is what it is i understand that some people just can't follow uh, they can't read and they can't uh they, they just can't grasp just common sense and what's going on in baseball which i i understand it's hard to follow it's a hard sport it's difficult to watch nine innings these days it's difficult to follow and watch all 162 i understand that it's not an easy thing um i'm not gonna i'm not gonna roast anyone for that but at the same time um there are certain things where it's just kind of common sense and you got to just know and this is one of those things but hey i mean if you still want to try to argue in the comments we're here for it and we'll like i said we'll be here next episode to to just do the same thing and clown you guys i, I mean it's simple as that simple as <laughs> that but do you have anything else to say to brave fans <laughs> <laughs> I look, I'm not gonna lie, these Braves fans have they've been pissing me off lately. I mean the the leader of the freaking clan, uh Mr. Sports Talk Atlanta, he makes it ten times worse, but yeah, his little minions in the comment section make it even worse. So those Braves fans, it, we're gonna be holding up uh, that Annalise title at the end of the season and we'll 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 see what happens come playoff time, just like Mr. Uh Spencer Strider said. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, Spencer Strider even said it. So let's see what happens comes playoff time. So, Brave fans, let's pump the brakes here because I got news for you. Regardless, both teams are going to make the playoffs. So, uh, whether it's the Mets in the wild card or you guys in the wild card, both teams will be in the postseason unless something extremely catastrophic happens to either team. And even then, I don't think it would be catastrophic enough to the point where either one of the teams – falls out because the Mets are just two wins away from being 500, which I can't imagine they only win two games and then that's it for the season. Can't imagine they lose every game from here on out, especially with the level of competition or my bad, my bad forgot. We, we can't talk about that because apparently, apparently no, we, we can't say Mickey schedule any or anything like that, but uh, I'm scrolling through the other tweets that he put out tonight. Let's see. He was on a war Oh, yeah, tonight. he was on a war path. Uh, yeah, he was not uh, – yeah, he, he was going crazy with the, with the Mets, which, uh, I mean, listen. Yeah, uh, if you Do care you that want much now. about us, then – yeah, really it is what that. it is. I mean, I'm I'm scoreboard watching, but I'm not going to actively go out of my way and watch every pitch of a Braves game. So uh, you know what? May, maybe you're just a you're just a crazy fan like that, which you know what I respect. But uh, you gotta you gotta chill out a bit, and you gotta you gotta realize you gotta think before you tweet sometimes. Which I I listen. I understand. I I don't think before I tweet sometimes too. I end up putting something stupid out. We've all been there, yeah. but. There, it, there's a difference between doing it a couple times and it being every single tweet that you put out because that's just a bad look. And I mean, yeah, he's got Pikachu with a boner and a Braves hat on his timeline. All right, um, freak. I I don't know what to say. Um, that's a good way to end. <laughs> yeah, but. Help your balls out with Manscaped. I, I guess that's how I'll say that. <laughs> that's all I gotta say to that. But uh, do you have anything to add when it comes to either talking about the Braves or talking about the Mets? I uh, look. I I'm getting nervous. I won't lie. Two game lead. I mean, it's this is the smallest it's been since uh, with that series we had against them where we looking really good. But now, as I said in that tweet, our easy part of the schedule is coming up. They're gonna have uh, some tough matchups. So I really think we could start pulling away with uh, this division lead and hopefully clinch it. I'm hoping by like the September 20 something, mid September or not mid September, like mid uh, 20s of September would be phenomenal. Yep, agree there. And 
listen, again, I, I want to make it clear the Dodgers are not an easy team. But outside of that, for the most part, a easy schedule. And I guess not including the Brewers because I, I know that Brave fans now are going to dissect every little thing here. But not including the Brewers, not including the Dodgers. Uh, yeah, the schedule, fairly easy. And hopefully they just cruise through, clinch the division early so we don't have to play meaningful games against the Braves in that last three uh, three series set there. But, yeah, sure. I think that's uh, all we really have to talk about. Probably our longest episode, actually, which this last yeah. segment definitely it was uh, fun. <laughs> Got, took up a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was the most fun. That is for sure. Because <laughs> that, that series was frustrating, but at the end of the day, we got through the tough part. And you know what? The Mets still, at the end of the day, played pretty good baseball during that tough part here of the schedule, uh, excluding the Dodgers. But, yeah, uh, overall, I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling pretty good also despite – you know, my panic level, like I said, being a six and a half, I'm feeling still pretty, uh, pretty content because lineup could get going soon, hopefully, especially against the Rockies, pick yeah. things up. But yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Do you have anything else that you want to say? Yeah, no, that's about it. Uh, I hopefully everyone out there enjoys this episode. I mean, if they listen this long, we always say it. If they had to have liked it, leave a like. That's all. And if you're a Braves fan, tell us how mad we got. Oh here. yeah, they're gonna be mad. I mean, they'll they'll be leaving those comments. <laughs> oh, I I'm we gotta send this to to Brave fans. Let them we let do. them know. Let them hear. Let them we're here. Understand. We're we're here. We're here to help you. We're here to help you. Just grasp simple things. That that's all it is. It's all we're helping you. Yeah. It's all it's all friendly here. We're not trying to be assholes. We're not trying to be mean or anything. We're just trying to help you understand how baseball works, which. The more knowledgeable baseball fans there are, the better. That's just what we're here for. We want more knowledgeable fans when in every sport. It's just it just better. It makes things easier on Twitter to have a conversation and everything. It, it's just better for you, me, and everyone else involved. So, yeah, uh, that's where we're going to end things, honestly. Uh, like Nico said, if you made it this far, you enjoyed. So, leave a like. Especially if you're a Brace fan, definitely leave a like. We, oh, we yeah, they love this one. But – yeah. <laughs> also, uh, subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're a Brave fan. Subscribe because uh, I- I'm sure you're going to, so you could be here for every single podcast now. Because now that we got your attention, you know what? That's what we wanted. We we're, we're here for it. We're here for it. But we'll take clout, no matter uh, if it's good or bad. Here, we'll we'll take the viewership. But of course, we definitely appreciate our Met fans more who do give us the support. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for listening. Leave a like, subscribe, and if you're listening on Google Podcasts, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, leave a rating, leave a review. Unless it's a one star, then just go kick rocks and go elsewhere. But especially you Brave fans, enough. Get off. Stop. Stop trying to leave a bad review right now. Give us a good rap. But that is where we're going to end things. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next one. Let's go, Mets.